Madam President, it's a great honor uh, for me and for my agency to share this uh, stage with you today. Thank you very much, uh, Madam. Uh, dear colleagues, we are in the middle of the first truly global energy crisis. Our world has never ever witnessed an energy crisis of this depth and of this complexity. All the countries around the world are affected with this energy crisis, but of course, Ukraine is the main victim. As I mentioned to uh, Madam President a few minutes ago, uh, this afternoon I am going to uh, meet Ukrainian Energy Minister Galushenko to sign a joint work program for the next two years. First, to support Ukrainian energy system for the next uh, months to come, and second, assist uh, Ukraine to build a modern energy system after the war. But of course, uh, Europe is uh, heavily affected uh, from uh, the energy crisis, as uh, Russia was a key supplier of energy for Europe since uh, decades. And I, uh, I want to comment the focus that the Madam President and her commissioners have brought uh, to this uh, issue. Now, the uh, International Energy Agency has responded to the, uh, this crisis uh, very quickly in our nimble way. 24th of February was the invasion. 1st of March, only one week later, we came up with a 10-point plan for Europe what European countries can do in order to reduce the reliance on uh, Russian gas and what measures need to be taken, ranging from efficiency to renewables, penetration, acceleration of those, and to the topics which are hot topics in Europe, such as uh, uh, postponing or phasing out of uh, nuclear power in some countries. And they were very much aligned with the Republic of the EU, came from the uh, Commission, and uh, we are very happy that uh, many governments uh, in Europe have taken up our uh, suggestions. Now, uh, as uh, Madam President uh, mentioned, uh, Europe has done a lot to increase the resilience of the European energy system in the last uh, several uh, months. Uh, and today, we are, this winter, it looks like we are off the hook. We may go through this winter with some economic and social bruises, but normally we should go through this winter as a result of all the measures taken uh, in Europe because our gas storages are uh, very uh, high. But the message that I am bringing uh, up to you today is that the crisis is not over. And next year may well be, 2023, may well be much more difficult than this year, for three reasons. First, in the year 2021, Russian gas exports to Europe was about 140 BCM. This year, it went down to 60 BCM, as a, a, a 2022, and it is very likely that next year we may not have any Russian gas in our system. So there was a decline, and uh, as we all know, Russia is using uh, the uh, gas as a, a, a weapon when it comes to certain political issues. So next year, the first reason why we are thinking next year may be more difficult, first, Russian gas, which is declining already substantially, may not be with us at all. Second, uh, LNG. As Madam President mentioned, this year uh, we import a lot of LNG from U.S. and other sources, but next year might be even more difficult. The reason is the amount of new LNG capacity, LNG supply, LNG uh, coming from the exporting countries is at record low, only 20 BCM. We have recently never ever seen such a small amount of additional capacity coming. Uh, in Europe, uh, we have now, we are building many countries LNG import capacity. It's about 40 BCM coming next year. 
But the new LNG coming to market is very, very limited. And on top of that, China, a top LNG importer of the world, as a result of a possible comeback to economy, China may already eat up a big portion of that. So LNG markets will be tight. This is the second reason. Third reason why we are worried about the next year is uh, that the, uh, this year we have uh, experienced uh, unusually mild temperatures. And when you look at it today and the next days, the t temperature in, in, in Europe, we may uh, well see that the next weeks will be uh, rather uh, difficult in terms of the temperature. And also, uh, nobody can guarantee that next year's temperature will be as mild as this year. So putting these three things uh, together, namely, there may not be uh, uh, Russian gas deliveries at all. LNG markets will be exceptionally tight. And third, that we may not be able to benefit from the mild temperature uh, means that we may have a problem. So therefore, we made this uh, report that uh, I have the honor to uh, launch today with the, uh, Madam uh, President. Uh, we think that next year, Europe supply demand gap 2023 may reach the 30 BCM. It's a big number, 30 BCM, the gap. And if those efforts you mentioned, uh, uh, Madam President, uh, you have uh, done uh, with your uh, uh, colleagues were not there, this gap would have been uh, 60 BCM. As a result of these efforts, we have brought down uh, to uh, 30 BCM. This is a serious uh, uh, challenge, and uh, therefore uh, we thought, what can Europe do between now and next uh, uh, winter in order to close this gap, what kind of measures, and which are in line with the Europe's climate goals? So we can do many things, but we have chosen the measures which are uh, practical, can be done in one year, very short time for energy sector, one year, and at the same time in line with Europe, Europe's uh, climate goals. We have chosen five uh, topics, and I will finish uh, with that. The first one is faster improvement in energy efficiency, especially renovation of uh, uh, buildings, Focusing on the, uh, on the uh, social housing uh, first and providing incentive for renovation of the buildings. Or another example we have, uh, many countries in Europe don't have in their street lighting, LED lighting, move to LED lighting, incentivize them and save uh, energy there. So the first one is energy efficiency. We have a lot of uh, suggestions and examples, but I have chose these two. Second, faster deployment of uh, renewables. As Madam President said, this year we have seen a major record uh, deployment of renewables. The reason is, in the past, the main driver for renewables in Europe was climate change, and now energy security is the main driver of uh, renewables. We have seen major improvement there, and still there is a long project pipeline and they are waiting for licensing and permitting. And uh, it is, uh, in our view, uh, imperative that the countries are shortening uh, uh, this uh, licensing and permitting time, and it's, it is done in some uh, countries that the uh, governments show uh, the suitable uh, areas for larger uh, projects. And the authorization process, it takes ages in some uh, countries should be done in a one-go uh, one shops, uh, 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 one-stop uh, go uh, uh, shops in uh, many countries. The third one is uh, the uh, uh, heat pumps. One-third of the European gas is consumed for heating in the buildings. And going from the gas heating to electricity heating, uh, we have uh, all the available proven technology, heat pumps, and there is a need for further incentivizing the heat pumps, uh, uh, changing the electricity tariffs to provide a, a additional incentive for heat pumps. This will also save, uh, again, uh, gas. And fourth, the uh, changing the behavior of the consumers. 
well designed uh, communication uh, campaigns would be helpful uh, here. Again, ac according to our analysis in uh, Europe today, the average temperature in the buildings are about 22 degrees Celsius. Bringing it down one degree Celsius would save us about 10 BCM, so a significant uh, amount. And the fifth and the last uh, 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 measure that we are suggesting is in some of the uh, countries that are exporting gas to Europe, especially the countries in like Algeria, Egypt, a lot of gas is uh, 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 flaring, just uh, through methane it is flaring. If they are captured, which is very easy and cheap, and if there's an incentive there, that gas can be uh, just uh, sent to uh, Europe in the context of, uh, we say them, you capture, we pay for it. It can provide additional gas uh, to Europe. These measures uh, are uh, already documented in our report. You will see easily done, practical and real-world impact measures, and they would cost, they wouldn't be for free, they would cost 100 billion euros in one year. So we have to pay 100 billion euros to, in, in order to implement them. But that 100 billion euros will be paid back in two years in terms of saving natural gas bills. So this is a, in two years they pay back this 100 billion dollar uh, of uh, investments and they will bring multiple uh, benefits to, uh, to weaken the pressure on the households and the, uh, and the uh, businesses. This is uh, perhaps a, a very important one. Second, uh, they are going to accelerate the clean energy transition. Third, they will comfort the uh, international uh, markets. And fourth, uh, they will provide a firm answer to Russia weaponizing uh, uh, energy. So uh, I would like to uh, uh, stop uh, here. And uh, the, there are some proposals uh, we are following at the IEA, as uh, Madam uh, President uh, mentioned. We very much hope that uh, those uh, proposals, uh, Madam President, see the light of the day as soon as possible because we need an urgent decision and it is never too early to address the problems of uh, next uh, winter. Uh, we are thankful to you for your uh, leadership and uh, we are uh, happy to work with the European Commission and uh, with the member states and we are at your disposal. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I will now take a few questions. There were many requests already. Please note that there is a technical briefing following this press conference, so you may save your more technical questions for our experts from the European Commission and from the agency.